Hi, this is James and welcome to the Junior Developer Central Node.js Essentials training course. This course is going to teach you all of the fundamental things about Node.js and how to use it as a junior developer. And it will give you a good grounding in one of the most in-demand technologies today. So I'm really excited to be delivering this course, as although Node.js has been around for a while now, it is getting bigger and more in demand, and having this skill in your bow as a junior developer will really set you apart from others when it comes to applying for jobs. In this video, I just want to explain a little bit about what Node.js is, and what we'll be covering in the course. So let's answer that question, what is Node.js? So you might already have your own view or opinion of what Node.js is, and if you ask most people, you'll get a response something along the lines of, it's JavaScript but it's running on the server. Or at least it's JavaScript but not running inside any kind of browser. And that's not a bad description, but there's a little more to the story than just saying that Node.js is JavaScript but not running inside a browser. There are actually a few different components and parts to what forms Node.js to become a complete thing, and understanding these different parts will be key in understanding and becoming an effective Node.js developer. So if you look on the Node.js website, you'll see the definition that they give is that Node.js is a JavaScript runtime which is built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. So basically Node.js is using the same compiler or the same engine that Chrome uses to actually run JavaScript code. But that keyword runtime needs a little bit of explaining, so I've put together a small diagram just to explain that in a little bit more detail. So imagine we're looking at the Chrome web browser here, uh, and you can see that it will contain that V8 engine to actually interpret and run the JavaScript code that's been required by a web page to do some kind of action. So we know Node.js uses that same V8 engine, so what makes Chrome different from Node.js? Surely they're just using the same engine and can do the same things. Well that's where the runtime comes in, because if you've done any work with JavaScript in the browser, you'll have probably encountered and used the document object, and possibly also the window object to do certain things to the page that you're working with within the browser. For example, on the document object, you can set up event listeners, you can access the actual HTML elements and modify them in any way if you need to, and the window object holds loads of information like the current location that you're browsing it to. So you might be surprised that these web APIs aren't actually part of the JavaScript language, so they're actually provided via Chrome as web APIs. The V8 engine has no idea about them. And that kind of makes sense when we're looking at the Node.js V8 engine because that doesn't need to know anything about the window object or the document object because it's running outside of the browser. So what does Node.js have access to? Well, Node actually provides its own APIs and there are similar objects available such as the process object and the global object. And there's more functionality provided which I'll explain in a moment, but these form part of the Node.js runtime. So just to illustrate this, I'm going to show you in Chrome and Node.js how these objects look. So here we are on my desktop, and on the right hand side I've just got my developer tools open in a Chrome window, and on the left hand side I've got an instance of Node.js running. So in the developer tools I can access the document object, and if we expand that you can see all of the elements that are available in the particular web page that's open. Whereas if I go over to Node.js and try to access the document object here, you'll see document is not defined because it doesn't exist as part of the Node.js runtime. We can actually access the process object, and you can see there there's lots of information that's provided, lots of properties and functions that are available on that process object. But of course, if we go back over to Chrome and try and access that from here, because it's only part of the Node.js runtime, process won't be available. And I can illustrate this also with the global object, which isn't available within the Chrome runtime whereas the window object is obviously available inside of the browser window. But if we go back over to Node.js, global is available to us as an object within the Node.js runtime, but obviously window is not defined. So hopefully I've provided a little bit more information to that question of what is Node.js, but I did mention a moment ago that there's a lot more to the runtime, a lot more components that form Node.js as a whole. So having that process and global object allows us to find out a bit of information about the system that we're working on, but there are a lot more Node.js modules that allow you to do more complex tasks within your Node.js programs. So for example, in that core Node.js runtime, you have modules that provide file APIs so that you can open, read, and write to actual files on your file system. There are modules that cover HTTP requests so you can send and receive data to external servers. There are modules on cryptography so that you can actually create secure data when you're saving it into a database or a file, for example. 
and there is also an operating system module so you can use that to interact and find out more information about the system that the Node.js program is running on. So that's just a flavour of some of the core modules that are available but also in addition to that there is a huge library of external modules and that's actually one of the key features of Node.js is this external repository of all these pre-written software packages that you can use within your own programs. So for example there are libraries that allow you to interact with databases, other types of servers and even full web frameworks that allow you to create and host your own web applications. So in summary Node.js is an implementation of the Google Chrome V8 engine to run JavaScript, but with a lot of additional functionality focused on working with the server or the computer that you're working with. So what will you be learning about in the Node.js Essentials training course? Well of course the first thing we'll do is get set up, so in the next video I'll talk about the tools that you'll need and actually get Node.js installed onto your computer. We'll then look at some of those core Node APIs, and this is something a lot of new Node.js developers miss out on. They jump straight into all of those pre-written packages and frameworks that are available, and they actually miss out on some of the key functionality, which is really useful when working with Node.js at a basic level. So learning about the core APIs and being able to work with them will allow you to better understand and work with the library packages that are available, and you might even be able to write your own. So when we are comfortable with working with the core APIs, we'll move on to looking at some of the modules that are available within the NPM repository, which is that extensive library of pre-written packages that are available to you when writing Node.js programs. And then we'll look at creating actual web applications using one of those modules, which is called Express. And we'll use the Express tool to generate a web server which will serve some web pages and provide access to a database so that we can read and store information in there. And then finally we'll look at deploying your Node.js applications to various web hosting providers. And there's a little bit more to deploying a Node.js application than just uploading your file somewhere. We need to make sure that we've got a suitable environment that will run it and it's set up in a way that is stable and secure. So I hope you're looking forward to the course, I'm really excited to be delivering it to you and when you're ready we can move on to the next lesson which is setting up your Node.js environment.